Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you. I'm so pleased to be here. And as Grace was saying, it's really uh, so heartwarming to be in a room of so many people that um, are interested in human rights issues. And um, you know, it's been a little, it's been a tough climate in D.C. for the past few months. So it's really nice to see everybody. And um, thank you for your interest in this. Um, as Natalie mentioned, I am Samira Hafiz from the National Domestic Workers Alliance. Um, NDWA, along with the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum, co-anchors the We Belong Together campaign, which brings a gender lens to the immigration policy discussion. discussion. We Belong Together was started in 2010 as a response to the notorious anti-immigrant law passed in Arizona, SB 1070, to investigate how harsh immigration enforcement policies impact women and families. As the debate about immigration reform heated up in Congress, we shifted our focus to ensure that the needs and uh, concerns of immigrant women were part of the policy reform debate. And then as we shifted to the administration for administrative relief uh, proposals, we um, wanted to make sure those same concerns were honored. Most recently, we have been play, uh, playing a role in advocating um, on family detention as it's emerged in the past year or so. Um, we, we Belong Together has established six policy priorities to guide our work, and one of them includes reforming the costly, inefficient, inhumane detention system and ending family detention. And if you're really hanging off the edge of your seat on what the other five policy pillars are, you can check out um, our report published earlier this year called The Heart of the Matter, The Way Forward on Immigration Policy on our website, webelongtogether.org. Um, so just to give you a general picture about immigration detention, not focused on family detention yet, but just a snapshot, um, the Department of Homeland, uh, Homeland Security has a capacity to detain 34,000 immigrants per day. And it's estimated that of those detained, 10% are women. Um, they're spread out throughout the country, often in remote areas with little access to legal counsel or other kind of social service support. And um, it's also estimated that a large percentage of those women are survivors of domestic violence or other forms of gender-based violence. Um, many women in detention end up separated from their children with, and have difficulty participating in family court proceedings like custody uh, proceedings or other child welfare proceedings. Other concerns that women in detention face are limited privacy. Often they're in facilities that have all male staff or limited female staff. Um, there are sometimes pregnant and nursing women in facilities. There have been instances of shackling of pregnant women in uh, Department of Homeland Security facilities. Um, lack of adequate gynecological and prenatal care and proper sanitation. And of course, transgender women face particular and um, uh, outstanding vulnerabilities. Outside of women in detention, immigrant women are, are greatly impacted by the detention system because they are often left to raise children and support families on their own without the support of their partners. Um, and there are deep psychological costs for children and family structures generally. Now, that brings us to family detention. In 2009, the administration um, closed what was the biggest family detention facility at the time, Hutto, after reports of the abysmal human rights condition in those facilities and an outcry from human rights advocates. Um, there was one facility that remained open, Burks, in Pennsylvania, which held under 100 families and was kept open primarily as a short-term residential center for families awaiting removal. Um, it's been well documented that institutional settings are detrimental for children, for family structures, and for survivors of trauma. Um, despite that, the administration has moved again towards family detention. After the increase in migration of unaccompanied children and families over the past few years, in particular last year, the Obama, uh, Obama administration responded by stepping backwards and reviving family detention. So currently, there's three facilities. Um, there's two in Texas. Um, one is called Carnes, and the, well, these are not the official names, but one is called Carnes and the other Dilly. Um, Carnes holds over five, has a, over 500 beds, but they're set to expand, and Dilly has 2,400 beds. Um, and Burks, which is in Pennsylvania, now has expanded to around 200 beds. And um, as Natalie mentioned, there is a congressional delegation um, that's actually going on today to visit the Dilly and Carnes facilities in Texas. Um, 
Family detention ends up costing us around $343 per day per, uh, per family, whereas alternatives to detention um, cost anywhere from 70 cents to $17 a day. Um, releasing, uh, releasing immigrants to, friend, uh, to family members or close friends has no cost. So most families in detention are survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, assault or other forms of gender-based <coughs> violence. The increase in migration is, is co correlated with the increase in violence in, um, in, in countries in Central America, particularly Honduras, uh, Guatemala, and El Salvador. And many of the women that have, and women and children that have come have undergone sexual assault, rape, domestic violence, um, other threats from, uh, from gang activity. Um, in, it, according to the Department of Homeland Security's own statistics, close to 90% um, within the family detention facilities have been found to face a credible fear, credible fear of persecution if removed to their home country. Half of the children in these facilities are under six years old. I myself have visited Dilly and Carnes. Um, I saw babies, toddlers, I saw nurse, uh, nursing mothers. Um, I spoke to some of those mothers and they talked about their experiences, the violence um, they faced, the trauma that they had undergone. Um, most of them talked about domestic violence, rape, or other unsafe conditions. Um, in the facility, they face widespread fear and uncertainty a lack of awareness about their cases, um, about the immigration process, and how long they would be in detention. Um, I remember one woman asked me how long I thought she would be in there, and I, I, you know, I said, I don't know. And she said, could it be longer than five months? And I said, yes. And she said, what am I going to tell my, my baby? Um, there have been several women that have been released that talk, have been speaking about the conditions in these facilities. Um, so the, some of them talk about how mothers and children are separated as a form of punishment, um, how some children are placed in, in confinement with the mothers, um, solitary confinement as a form of punishment with just a, a bed and um, no bathroom. Um, there's a reported weight loss amongst the children, sexual ab abuse allegations um, by the staff, or this, uh, the abuse is by the staff, the allegations have been made by the detainees, and hunger strikes, work stoppages, suicide attempts, it, the conditions really are inhumane, abysmal, and completely un-American. Um, the We Belong Together campaign has recommended ending family detention and keeping the families together. Um, we, we first recommend that all the families be released to relatives or close friends, and when that is not possible, the use of community-based support alternatives to detention programs. Um, we Belong Together feel strongly that um, acceptable forms of alternative to detention do not include further criminalization of immigrants or unwar unwarranted surveillance. So we are against monitoring programs like ankle monitors, um, but recommend community-based support programs. Um, we also think that there should be increased funding for alternatives to detention and legal access, as well as social services for um, detainees. As I mentioned, most of these women are survivors of trauma. Many of the children are as well. And they have no access to any social services to help them move forward from that and are in a re-traumatizing situation um, being in detention. And We Belong Together also recommends that any agency that interfaces with children should adopt a best interest of the child standard. Um, to be, uh, so it was very um, heartwarming that many of the UPR recommendations um, mirror many of the recommendations that we have been making for quite some time. Um, as Jamil mentioned, um, the, one of the recommendations, the strongest one, was about ending family detention and the detention of children and seeking alternative to detention. Um, he also mentioned the ending detention for the purpose of deterrence. And the department actually has stated that they were going to step away from that kind of policy after they faced pressure um, when a federal court judge granted a preliminary injunction um, stating that each family has, should undergo an individualized assessment um, to determine if they should be detained or not. And that assessment should relate to whether they are a danger or a flight risk and that deterrence is not an acceptable reason to detain people. Um, the UPR recommendations also talk about avoiding the criminalization of immigrants, um, the right of family reunification, and keeping in mind the best interest of the child in any immigration proceedings. 
um, and also examining the disproportionate impact of immigration policies on immigrant women, many who are mothers, many who are survivors, um, and many who are willing to speak out against what's going on in the facilities today. Um, so in terms of what members can do, as we mentioned, um, one of the one of the most important things is visiting the facilities because it's one thing to talk about children being in detention, it's another thing to actually see a baby or a toddler um, in, locked up in a facility. And so we're very, very um, happy that there is this congressional delegation and several um, of our champions are on that um, delegation and we know will speak strongly about their experiences and how this practice needs to end. Um, it's also been mentioned that there's been a letter signed to Secretary Johnson calling for an end to um, family detention by both the, um, House and Senate members. Um, as as uh, we know, the, the government has until September to respond, so it's up to us to continue exerting pressure on the administration um, to end this practice and make sure that the Obama administration's legacy on immigration is more powerful than this, uh, what they're doing now. Thank you. Thank you for listening.